All right, this is chapter 2, number 72. This is one where you have to name the following ionic compounds. So when you say name ionic compounds, remember it's going to be a metal and a nonmetal, or it's going to be a metal and a polyatomic ion, or it could be two polyatomic ions. But bottom line, you have to name the metal first, and then the nonmetal has to have an IDE ending, and you use a Roman numeral for most everything except for group 1 and 2. And then for the uh, metal and polyatomic ion, keep the names the same, but then make sure that you have the Roman numeral in the middle. So 72 letter A is potassium. And then CN is the polyatomic ion cyanide. No Roman numeral needed for that one because potassium is in group 1 or 2. And remember, 1 and 2 doesn't need Roman numerals. Letter B is sodium. And then BrO2, you have to look that polyatomic ion out back here. That's bromite, sodium bromite. Once again, no poly, no, no uh, Roman numeral needed because sodium is in group one. Letter C, strontium. And then hydroxide is the polyatomic ion. And once again, since geranium is in group 2, group 2 is always plus 2, you don't need a Roman numeral. Letter D, cobalt. And then Te is uh, an element over here that's uh, uh, um, called tellurium. And since it's a binary one, only two kinds of uh, a metal and a nonmetal, it would be called telluride. And now you're going to need a Roman numeral in there because cobalt is not in group 1 or group 2. And telluride is in the oxygen group, so you'd have to make the assumption that that's minus 2, which means that cobalt's got to be plus 2 because if you notice in the formula right here, there's only one cobalt and one tellurium atom. And if this is minus 2, then cobalt's got to be plus 2, so it would be cobalt 2 telluride. Letter E. Iron and then CO3 is the element car or the polyatomic ion carbonate. And iron is not in group one or group two, so it's definitely going to need a Roman numeral. Look up carbonate on the back if you don't have it memorized. It's negative two. You'll notice that there's three of those carbonates. And let's see, iron, there's two of those. So something times two plus negative six has got to equal zero, because remember the charges have to match and balance each other out. So that means iron must be positive 3. So you'd put Roman numeral 3 right there. Letter F, chromium. And then NO3 stands for nitrate, a polyatomic ion that you have to memorize. And it's also back here. Chromium is not in group 1 or group 2, so it's going to need a Roman numeral. We know that nitrate is negative 1. There's three of them in the formula. So that means chromium must be positive 3 to balance that out. So chromium 3 nitrate. Letter G, ammonium is the polyatomic ion, as opposed to ammonia, which is a, uh, a, a molecular compound. So this is ammonium ion, NH4. And then SO3 is sulfite. Uh, one you didn't necessarily have to memorize, but you can look up back here. And since this is a polyatomic ion and a polyatomic ion, you don't need to memorize it. Then letter H is sodium. And then H2PO4 is um, a polyatomic ion that you would have to look up back here. And it's got two H's to it. So this one would be called, it probably has a couple of names, but dihydrogen phosphate is one of them because it's got two hydrogens and then a phosphate. Let's just stick with that. And it doesn't need a Roman numeral because sodium is in group one and group one never needs Roman numerals. And then two more to go. Letter I is potassium. And then MnO4 is permanganate. And once again, potassium doesn't need a Roman numeral because it's in group one. And then lastly, letter J is silver. And then Cr2O7 is a dichromate. That's the polyatomic ion. And you notice that silver is not in group one or group two, so it could have a Roman numeral. But you know that silver is always positive one. So you don't have to put a Roman numeral in there. But if you want to, you can. That is number 72.